Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today we're talking about where birds sleep and how we can help them, especially during these cold winter months when the weather is harsh and the birds have to survive till sunrise when we get some radiant heating to warm them up. Well, where do they sleep and how can we help? All right, well, where do birds sleep in general? For the most part, they seek out thick vegetation. Uh, cedars uh, are a great example, spruces, firs, pines. They like to get into thick uh, vegetation. So one, they're protected from the elements, but wind and snow, because that, that when, with the evergreen leaves on there, needles on there, they help uh, protect them against some of that. And also from predators. It's harder for a predator, like a raccoon climbing up in there at night, uh, to surprise them if they if it's a thicker vegetation. They're sitting out on a big open limb, they may get picked off easier. So for most birds sleep in thick vegetation, but not all birds. And, and of course, thick vegetation doesn't give them great, great protection, but it's the one thing you can truly do in your yard to help them uh, overall, and that is the landscaping. Make sure you have some evergreens in your landscaping to help them. Now, they also sleep in all kinds of places. Uh, the best example are your nest boxes, your bluebird boxes or chickadee boxes and uh, great crested flycatcher boxes owl boxes, uh, all those are cavities. And birds that naturally nest in cavities are going to gravitate toward uh, natural cavities to nest in. And examples of those are, you know, chickadees uh, and wrens and bluebirds. These, all these birds nest in cavities. So they're accustomed to getting inside of structures for the nesting process. So they naturally will roost in places like that as well. So if you have a, a bluebird box out at the end of the season, if you watch my bluebird videos, uh, nest boxing, you know I recommend cleaning out the nesting material after each nesting. Uh, that is to protect the next nest from any uh, maybe parasites that may have been in there. And of course, bluebirds won't use the same nesting material. They'll, they'll fill the box up with another nest and another nest if you don't clean it out. Well, the one exception of that is at the, the last nesting of the season in the late, late summer, um, you can you know, check that box you know, once they're fledged. And if the nest is, is clean, if there's not any you know, parasites, you want to use glove, make sure there's no feather lice is the most uh, common one. But if you, you can clean that out or you can leave that nesting material in there so that in the fall and the winter when they're looking uh, to roost in there, there is some nesting material. But if you don't have, if you need to pull it out, you can put some nesting material in in the fall and you'll just want to clean it out in the spring. In late February is a good time to clean out bluebird boxes for most of us. Um, you can use uh, pine shavings or, or what I, I recommend more. Uh, these are actually cedar shavings, but I recommend pine shavings in the bottom of it. And that will help insulate the box a little bit more. Now, some people take it to another extreme, and that is they buy or construct roosting boxes. Now, in a in a typical nest box, the the birds go in, of course, and they sleep on the bottom of the box. And there'll be several birds. Uh, I've seen six, seven, eight bluebirds uh, stacked on top of each other in a, a, a bluebird box at night. Uh, but in roosting pocket, the roosting boxes, uh, you see that there's the, the box opens at the bottom, the holes at the bottom instead of on the top. Well, and inside that there are rungs or, or rods, the dowel rods running through there that the birds can sit up on and uh, get a little bit better wind protection uh, that way, I guess. But they, I have carried ro uh, roosting boxes in the past and I have hardly ever sold one. You know, most people already have bluebird boxes and they don't see the need to do it. Um, but if you want to make that investment, you can. And there, and again, there can be lots of birds. It depends on where you're watching this from, too, on the number of species in there. Uh, you know, there, there are some famous stories of just a tremendous number of birds packed into a roosting box uh, to, to survive, to help them survive the winter. And then the, kind of the combination of those two is a convertible nesting box. This one, it, this is a bluebird box, but the door, the door front door is mounted in the winter upside down. So the holes there, and there are dowel rods you can insert in there so that the birds can sit up on those. Remember, birds' feet, like get, get you back to where you can see me. 
remember when birds sit on a limb at night, and I've got a whole video on this, and that is their feet, you know, three toes forward, one, one toe back, there it goes, you wrap around the tree limb, and when they put their weight down on their legs, it literally locks their tendons so that the wind can blow and things they don't get, they won't fall off. Um, and then they have to lift their weight off their legs before they can release their feet and fly away. So, but one of the simplest things you can add are roosting pockets. And these uh, you know, came about uh, now several years ago, but uh, they're great little devices for birds to get in out of weather. And you can, they're simple. They're, these are made of seagrass and some have roofs, some don't have roofs. And, and they're not for nesting because they're not tight from weather and, and you know bird may try to nest in them but for the most part they're for getting inside of there and those guys that i showed earlier are the ones that are famous for using them black cap chickadees carolina wrens eastern bluebirds ca natural cavity nesting birds there's others of course tit mice and things can get in them nut hatches can get in them several birds can use them but these are probably the three that i'm most familiar with you with using them uh, and they get in there and it gives them a warm place to get out of the wind. And where do you put them? Well, you can put them just about anywhere. Uh, these are uh, hanging freely in one of my my, my customer's yards. Uh, and he's got several to choose from. But other people will take them and put them up under crevices. Uh, I like the, the joist under your deck where they're, the beam comes down, I, I, I put them in little crevices like that, uh, tucked up under places. That's where those you know, wrens especially would love that, uh, roosting up and sleeping up in those kind of sites. And you put a pocket up and it gives them added protection. You can just hang them on a fence. You can, again, like James in a tree, some people just uh, put them in a thick bush. And there's all kinds. Like I said, there's ones with roofs, with ones without roofs. But the little roosting pockets or a thing you could do, and they're inexpensive. And that's an easy way to help your birds, especially during the winter months. So, so roosting pockets, roosting boxes, uh, planting evergreens, those are all simple ways that you can help your birds survive really cold winter nights. And there we're in the heart of that stretch right now. So if you like the program, please give us a like, give us a share. And you're, if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell and so you know when my, uh, I'm going to be on next with my notifications. So uh, great idea for a program. Send in more because I want to talk about what you want me to talk about. Until next time, let's talk birds.